Hey everyone, Chris Madsen here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how a design table can be used for something much more complex than simple shafts. We're gonna look at the ET66 calculator. We're gonna see if we can use a design table to create a, a couple of configurations for this product. Now, I don't expect you to follow along uh, with this video. I'm gonna time lapse through a lot of it. It's simply to demonstrate uh, that design tables can be used for complex things. Let's do it. Okay, so I just wanna kinda point out what I'm doing right here. I am going um, into the design table that I created for this entire ET66 calculator front cover, and I'm looking for the parameter names, the handles they're called, uh, the parameter names that uh, I need to change in order to extend out this ET66 calculator to go from a standard version to a scientific version. So one of the things you can notice is that I keep going back into the part itself, uh, clicking on a feature, looking in the design tree to see what the name of the sketch is, and then going back into the design table to find that sketch and changing the parameters that are needed. And I'm just going in and doing this for all of the parameters that are needed to widen out the ET66 calculator. Okay, I have just completed doing uh, a design table for the ET66 front cover. Here you can see the uh, standard version and um, with all of its features, of course, you're familiar with this part. But I have created this configuration over here called Scientific Black. If I go to Scientific Black, I now have uh, a lot more buttons that can have trig functions and other such things and the back of the product now has all of the features uh, that would be necessary for a calculator of this width. So uh, that was the first thing I wanted to do. Next thing I wanna do is control the appearances with the design table, so that's what I'm gonna do next. Okay, so I am now um, successfully controlling the color via the design table. I've made my default green just so that I could, you know, know that a different color is working. I have my scientific black, I have my standard black, and I have my standard white. I'm gonna go make a uh, scientific white right now, and then we are going to um, work with the logo, the, uh, the decal situation, possibly. We'll see if I have the decals in black so I can use it on the white version. If not, um, I won't do the decals. All right, in the end, it turns out I did not have a black version of the Braun uh, logo decal. So <clears throat> I just paused for a few minutes here to take care of that and create those graphics. I did that in Adobe Illustrator and then brought them in here as PNGs, as decals in SolidWorks to get that all nice and worked out. Okay, so what we have done now is we have created the design table for the ET66 top cover, which includes um, a scientific version, a white scientific version, a black version, and a white version, and uh, all of the features in the back do what they're supposed to do as we go from scientific white to scientific black, excuse me, to scientific white to standard white, and we are also controlling the logos in here. Uh, these logos are allowing us to, these decals are allowing us to see kind of the difference between, you know, because there's a black logo and there's a white logo. So what was the purpose of this video? It was to demonstrate that a design table can be used for things that are complex and to manage the design process 
so that one does not need to create uh, multiple CAD models of these parts. Instead, they're all managed in one CAD model with the different configurations. That's it. I hope you found that inspiring and at least instructive as to how design tables can be useful in the design process. I'll see you next time.